to suffer sometimes. But some, we also have another question. Why do the wicked people, evil people, why do they prosper? Why do they have good in this world? Why are they so bad? They steal, they lie, they, they do sins behind the scenes. And yet Hashem gives them a lot of good things in this world. Why? Why did Hashem allow, for example, the Nazis, right, the to go and uh, kill in cold blood, and then they go home and they live their life and they had a good life. And the uh, people plan evil. Hashem allows them to do their plans. It doesn't make sense. This is, is this how Hashem runs the world? So there's a, also a famous question. If there's a good God in the world, so why does He allow so much bad? So the first thing is we have to realize that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is repaying them, the Rishayim, the wicked, for their good deeds that they did in this world. Usually a person is supposed to get reward in Olam Abba, in the world to come. So Hashem gave them uh, advancement. He paid them in this world, and that's actually short-selling them. Because really, the pl- pleasure of Lama Ba is not, not tangible in this world. And the mitzvah is something spiritual, so you should get a reward and place it spiritual, Lama Ba. The, the Bikeh tells us the, the whole live a whole life and a pleasure, and you live a whole life of all your ancestors, of all the people and all the people's ancestors in this world. It wouldn't be wor- worth five minutes. It wouldn't equal five minutes of pleasure in Lama Ba. So therefore, they got short-sailed. This, they, they, got, they, got, they got gypped. This is they get a reward in this world and not on Lama Ba. For example, Nebuchadnezzar, the wicked king of Babel, he once heard Hashem's name and he stood up. And because of the, that reward, he, because of that, of that small deed he did, he got a huge reward. Esav, he cried two tears. And Hashem gave him uh, tremendous, tremendous uh, merits and tremendous uh, success in this world because of those tears that he cried. So you see, Hashem does give these reshaim some, some, some reward in this world. So now the person could think that what? Just because you became a world leader, and you became, you became a billionaire. It means that he did a small deed in the world. That's, that's why he gets such a big reward. We have to realize that we don't realize the, the, the power of the mitzvot and the worth of the mitzvot. If that one mitzvah gave them all that, imagine all the mitzvot we do, how much is going to give us an olam abba. So therefore, it's a tremendous, tremendous uh, thing to think about. The rabbis also explain that the, the rishayim don't appreciate the spirituality. They don't appreciate the, the, the reward that they're going to get for the, for the mitzvah that they did. It's like giving a masterpiece to a person who doesn't understand art. The mitzvah to him is not so special. So Hashem gives it to him in this world because he doesn't appreciate it because he wouldn't appreciate it in Olam Abba. And we know that the Rambam teaches us there's no reward There's no reward for mitzvot in this world. All the reward for mitzvot in Olam Abba. So this is that we get reward in this world for doing good deed. is only schar mitzvah, mitzvah. The ability to do another mitzvah is this that we, the, 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 the reward for the mitzvah we did. So therefore we have to realize that the Rishayim who do get all these good things, even though they're not doing mitzvot, it's because they're getting the reward of Olama Ba in Olama Zeh. So therefore when the wicked prosper, don't take it too, too to heart. We have to say, would I want to be him? Would I want to get all my Olama Ba in Olama Zeh? Not so. Also, another thing we have to realize is, Chobot Levot says that the money is no more than a deposit from Hashem until he will get a righteous son or a grandson who will benefit from it. Some people, they're very wealthy. And they're very evil. Why do they have so much money? Hashem is waiting and setting up that this money, He's going to work all day for 60 years, right? And then eventually, He's going to have a grandson. He's going to have a son who needs all this money. But what? You need this tzaddik to go and work 60 years also to build that wealth? So what is He going to do? He's going to make this guy who works all his life. Then, boom, he passes away. Boom, he retires. Boom, something happens. He gives it to his son. And now the tzaddik's son can use these funds for to do mitzvah in the world. So Hashem knocks out two birds with one stone. He makes this, this guy who did was Rasha. Yes, he built all this money. He had all this wealth. But really Hashem was setting up to take it away from him and to give it to somebody else. As Kohelet says, riches hoarded by the owner to his misfortune. Sometimes a guy has riches, but really he's setting up somebody else. It's not really for himself. So therefore a person has to realize, don't lose patience. When you see people that they have fortunes, doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be for his wealth, for him. It's gonna, it might be for someone else. We know that there was a, 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 a Richter Miller. He said there was a famous story of this person named Charles Lindbergh, who was the first person to fly across the Atlantic in a plane by himself. Due to his fame and fortune, people knew he had money. Ended up being his son was kidnapped and murdered. So you see that what a lot of things that you have money doesn't mean it brings bracha. Sometimes money causes them so much stress. They don't sleep at night. Sometimes it causes them people to un- unneeded att- att- uh, attention. And sometimes marriage is dissolved because of all the money they have. So that necessarily doesn't mean that a person has a perfect life. If you open their bag, you would see that they wouldn't, you wouldn't think they have, you don't, they don't have the life you think they, they have. 
So therefore, a person has to realize that sometimes a person also gets reward for his chutavot. Sometimes a person has a, a merits from his previous generation that Hashem is paying to his children today. But again, all these reasons are to think, when you see somebody, you say, he's no angel, how is Hashem making him successful? You have to realize, will he keep his money? Does his money make him happy? Is he really, is he really successful because of this money in life? Or maybe he's not worthy and all that he's getting is Allah Maban, Allah Mazer. And all these things only gave him problems. That's why Pekei Avot says, Barbein Nechassim, Barbein Da'agos, whoever has more wealth, more worry. If you have Torah, you'll be able to handle the worries. But if not, who says the more is good? Maybe less is good. And we have to realize that Hashem knows what He's doing. Baruch Hu